boxing has never been a, a, a sport with a strong central authority. Uh, look, if I say, you know what they should do in the end, in, in basketball? There are a million basketball leagues, leagues around the world. But when I say, you know what they should do in basketball, they refers to the NBA. The NBA is a, is a, is a league. You know, you have tours and tennis and golf. You have leagues in, in basketball and football. And the ones that are perceived as the major leagues, MLB, NFL, NBA, NHL, PGA, those have commissioners and, and, and central uh, uh, and authority figures with central control of the sport. Dana White in the UFC. Boxing has never had that. Boxing has always been independent contractors vying for their own short-term interest, oftentimes at the, long, at the expense of the long-term health of the sport. And if you want to look something up that explains this very well, Google game theory, the tragedy of the commons. It's, you're talking about game theory, sociological, political and sociological theory. The tragedy of the commons explains this perfectly. Do you think that unwittingly Triple G is painting himself into a corner in terms of getting an A-list? What's that? Do you think that Triple G might have unwittingly painted himself into a corner in terms of getting a genuine A-list? Because he's too, he's too dominant? Yeah. And because there are other promotional entities that have monopolized a lot of, of the plurality of talent in and around his weight class and for various reasons, including they don't want their guys to get knocked out, they're not going near Triple G. So what does he do? He has to keep doing this. I mean, like, it's a slower build, but he just puts a 16,000 plus at the Fabulous Forum in LA. Um, and, and, and even though it was against an overmatched opponent, everyone went home psyched. There's energy, they'll be talking about it on Monday. And this has been going on for, for three and a half years now on American television. Uh, and, and at first it was in front of 5,000 people in smaller rooms, and then it was 8,000 people in cells, and then it was, then it was in front of a, a, a capacity of 20,000, but it wasn't 20,000, and, and now they're selling out 20, 000, 15 to 20,000 seat arenas. So until someone like Canelo, a big name guy, gets in with Triple G, and he goes through that kind of round of um, pay-per-view promotion that really elevates your kind of brand awareness among casual sports fans, until that happens, he's going to have to keep doing the slow build. Well, he tried pay-per-view and it didn't go too well. It, it went as well as could be expected. Lemieux is not an enormous name. You know, he's, um, he wasn't overly accomplished. He was just the biggest name that they could get to agree to fight Triple G. And he did 150,000 buys. How did Floyd brand himself? You know how Floyd really, because if you looked at like crowds, he wasn't drawing enormous crowds. I was there at Corrales and uh, the Corrales fight. You know, I, it wasn't like sellouts, but eventually Floyd was so good, he just kept winning and winning and winning, that he got a Gaddy fight. Now, after the Gaddy fight, he's been through a round of promotion. Then he gets a De La Hoya fight. And after that level of promotion, everyone knows who he is. Marvin Hagler was going around building, 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 and then he eventually got a Duran fight. And after that round of promotion, Hagler, you know, he was doing a, he was doing right guard or whatever it was commercials not long yeah, after. It looks like Mayweather's getting Danny Garcia in September. Have you heard those rumors? And what yeah, we'll on see. I, I mean, there's there are a couple of guys people are in, really interested in seeing Floyd fight, yeah. and Danny Garcia, good fighter, isn't one of them because no one really believes he has a chance Porter to win. Feels that he should wait for the outcome of him and Thurman to to really fight the best one. Guys, we all know a good fighter from a special fighter, right? There are lots of good fighters in and around that division. Kel Brook's a good fighter. Sean Porter's a good fighter. Keith Thurman's a good, these are all good fighters. At welterweight, who's special? Who else? Of all the young, who else? Of all the young fighters? Errol Spence. Errol Spence. This is not like a mystery, you know what you see. You see Errol Spence, does that look like everybody else or does that look like something different? You see Terrence Crawford, does that look like everybody else or is that something extra? Terrence Crawford's special, Errol Spence is special. The other guys are dangerous fighters, you know, they have the right night and another guy has an off night, they can pull off an upset, but it would be an upset. What, what do you think about... Special or is he just good? Remains to be seen. He's, he's, you know, it remains to be seen. At this moment, he's straddling that fence. He's going to need, I thought he looked really good against Cotto, but you, you, you do get a little suspicious about fighters, because this is also the history of boxing promotion, has been when you get a guy who's a big draw and who's good, but you're not sure if he's great, and he can punch, but he's not a spectacular puncher. Generally, what promoters do, and this goes back to like Rocky Graziano and before Rocky Graziano, they put him in the middleweight with welterweights coming up. That way he looks a little bigger and stronger and he hits harder. And so far, Canelo's signature win 
was against Cotto, who really is a smaller guy. Although, Canelo is fearless. He fought, who would want to fight Austin Trout and Erez Landy Lara? If you're the money guy, you don't fight those two guys. What are you, crazy? Those are just the kind of guys who can beat you. And they were both close fights, but he won both of them. He's not afraid. But if you handle his career, you don't want to be stupid. Max, actually, what do you think about Garcia's credibility in his in his last two Mayweather? He said that he actually felt he didn't lose any because no one was able to beat Mayweather and even back out. Yeah, Floyd took him to school. Yeah. And by the way, based Can on lose any credibility? Ba based on how Canelo does in the rest of his career, that will affect Floyd's rating all time eventually. If Canelo goes on to be an amazing Hall of Famer, then that win, even though it was pre-Canelo Prime, is still an amazing win because Floyd started at 130 pounds. He, he fought a guy who's really a 154, 160 pounder at 22 years old. Not yet at his best, but still dangerous. So if Canelo goes on to do that, Floyd's stock historically rises. If Canelo turns out to be merely a good but not great fighter, that win doesn't quite look as good. This is the nature of boxing. It's not like even football where there are only 16 games in a season, but you get those 16 games every year to make an evaluation of teams, even before the playoffs. In boxing, we're trying to make these grand evaluations based on a guy fighting twice in a year, three times in 18 months. So there's just not a lot of uh, data. You know, there's not a lot, of, a lot of evidence, and we have to extrapolate, therefore, well, uh, Canelo went on to do this and this. Well, what a win for Floyd, right? Oh, he wasn't as good. Ah, that win doesn't look as good as, uh, you know, quite as good suddenly. You know, and, and, and that's just the nature of modern boxing. Did Delayo said that G is uh, Canelo Zero now that Mayweather and Pacquiao oh. retired? Well, what's your take on that? What's that? Delayo said that is Canelo Zero now that Mayweather and Pacquiao retired. Is, it, is, is that true? Well, the, the, the thing about, I used to argue with some promoters about this, who preferred Chavez Jr., for example, to Triple G in terms of a business. The thing about a business is you got to base it on someone who's blue chip, who's actually going to win some of the big fights. Like, say whatever you want about Oscar De La Hoya. He basically went even up with his entire era. They weren't better than him. I thought he beat Tito. Um, he was close with Mosley twice. Uh, Floyd beat him, but it was near the end of Oscar's career, and it was competitive. He beat Vargas. He beat Corte. I mean, you know, he just fought everybody, but, he, but Oscar was a gold medalist blue chip fighter. Floyd, obviously, blue chip fighter. Pacquiao, blue chip fighter. Marvin Hagler, Sugar Ray Leonard, you know, these guys are all blue chip fighters. You have to be blue chip. You can't just be a, a, a crowd pleasing attraction if you want to be in business long term as a top draw. Does that apply to Triple G too, Max? Because he's not getting the big <coughs> blue chip fighters and he's building it off. Fl yeah, Triple G hasn't beaten anyone yet mm -hmm. that we would consider, you know, would make him a great fighter. Should he's he just annihilating up? that next tier. But he can't help it. He's fighting whoever they put in front of him. If he can't land the Canelo, should he move up to fight a Ramirez yep. at 68? I think so. I think he should move up. He should fight the... Triple G is in a position where he should always fight the best available guy willing to fight him. Thanks, Max. Max, you got a lot of slack for... Uh... Oh. <laughs> yeah, don't post that guy. You got, a lot of, you got a lot of slack for saying Manny Pacquiao is a better pound-for-pound -pound fighter than Floyd. Man. I actually sure. disagreed with you. Yes, sir. And Tell us why. By the way, I'm surprised that boxing fans, unless you're caping for a guy, uh -huh. this is pretty straightforward. Uh -huh. Now, you could, e I said arguably, you could easily argue Floyd's side. I think you would probably lose the argument right now, but, you you know, like, depending on how well you argue it. These, we're talking about two upper echelon all-time greats. Lose, Floyd, but I'm you lose Floyd? You argue with Floyd? Is that what you're saying? What's that? You would, you would lose the argument, argument if you were arguing with Floyd. Yeah, yeah, but guys, this isn't that hard. Let me, let me give you an example, okay? I mean... Everyone knows my argument, right? Or are we all playing dumb? It's like Duran over Hagler. Uh, guys, there, right? let me make it real simple for you. Chocolatito, let's say he moves up and loses a tough fight five years from now to Terrence Crawford. Who's the better pound-for-pound -pound fighter? Assuming Chocolatito wins that's, titles that's, in between. Right. right. Chocolatito moves up, wins all kinds of titles, and one day loses a close, tough fight to Terrence Crawford. I, I don't know. But he's gotten older. He's grown out of the vision. Who? I'm just saying. Like, yeah, so but so have, is Terrence you Crawford. Make, you can't make the weight. But so is Terrence Crawford. He, he, I picked Terrence Crawford because he started 135. Floyd started 130. He turned pro. He's 130 pounds. But Chocolatito was 20 pounds under his weight. So I'm saying like, like a guy like Floyd Mayweather who walks around at 152, 155 yeah. maybe. But it's still, where you, it's, it's still where you fight. Pacquiao wasn't able to make flyweight. He was a flyweight who won the lineal championship. So, it, so if that's not 
the most, or one of the two or three most impressive things in the history of boxing, the fact that he could move up. Give me an example of another flyweight who was the lineal champion, moved up, won a bunch of titles in between, and then was that good as a welterweight. I was subjective as you just said about Sugar Ray Leonard. No, but I'm talking about lineal titles. Pacquiao won lineal titles. Indisputable, that's the man who beat the man, or, or else putting the belts together. No one had ever done it before, ever. There have been some great flyweights. Finito Lopez was even smaller, but Mark Too Sharp Johnson, Jimmy Weil, Pancho Villa, I mean, uh, uh, Miguel Canto, a lot of great flyweights. Uh, no one ever did that. No one ever came close to dreaming about doing that. And then Pacquiao did it. So the fact that Pacquiao is even competitive with Floyd Mayweather, who's one of the greatest pure boxers ever, when he came up from flyweight, and, and, so that's one in terms of the head-to-head -head competition. And do any of us believe that if they were the same size naturally, Floyd would beat Pacquiao? I, I, you really think that? Floyd is better than Pacquiao. It's, it's well, you think style. he would beat Pacquiao if Pacquiao was a natural welterweight? So I think you may. So if you made Floyd, you shrunk him down to a flyweight or, 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 or a, a Pacquiao size, Floyd would beat him. A lot of Floyd's advantages on Pacquiao, it's not just boxing skill, it's he's able to impose that boxing skill. He's a naturally bigger fighter with enough pop to keep guys like Canelo honest. And he's longer. That's a lot of it. But, I mean, you could argue the other way, of course. But the idea that what I'm saying is far-fetched, if, if you come to it from that point of view, you either don't know enough about boxing or you're being dishonest. That's like a basic dishonest position if you act as though that there's not an argument there. And in fact, I, I really don't have a horse in the race. I always thought Mayweather was going to beat Pacquiao. I never thought Pacquiao was going to beat him. I prefer pure boxers. But if you want to ask me, uh, I, I was a little kid rooting for Sugar Ray Leonard to beat Roberto Duran. But if you say who's a better pound-for-pound -pound fighter, Sugar Ray Leonard or Roberto Duran, it's Roberto Duran. Not only did he accomplish everything he accomplished, but when they went head-to-head -head at, at Sugar Ray's best weight, you know, it was like even up. Perfect. I'm going to humbly disrespect that. This is <laughs> That's, of course. That's, that's, fine. that's, that's yeah, sure. Are yeah. Absolutely. Are you surprised that it, it got so much attention, Max, when you said that? No, no, because, <laughs> mo because Floyd's um, fan, Floyd has a, a fan base that swears by him. That actually, some of them do, but many of them know very little about what came before Floyd uh, in boxing. But they're just so sure Floyd's the best because they never saw him lose. Once upon a time, I remember when I was a little kid, arguing with old timers about Rocky Marciano. It's the same thing. Marciano's the greatest ever. And I was like, come on, you really think he would beat Muhammad Ali? You really think that? Yeah, he never lost. Okay, all right. What can I tell you? I disagree. Thank, Thank you, guys. All right, guys. Thank you, man. Can I snap a photo with you with my